Okay, this is the second question, nine, and here we go. Uh, read this stuff carefully. It says in the figure below, dh is tangent. So this dh is tangent here uh, to the circle uh, a, b, c, d, that quadrilateral going through there, and b, c, d, e is a parallelogram. B, uh, c, d, e is a parallelogram. It means you got two sets of parallel lines here. B, e, and d, e are produced to g and f. So the g is a point on a, d, and f is a point on a, b. But d1 equals x, d1 equals x right here, and b2 equals y. So we need to know that. Now determine a in terms of x and y. Well, let's try this here now. It should make sense that d2 equals b2, and since b2 is y, they both equal y. And that's alternate angles because of the parallel lines b, e, and c, d. So we've got that those two are y. Now, if we look here, we have a tangent um, right here, and a triangle D, A, B inside. Well, X plus Y here, X plus Y here is the angle between the tangent and this chord, B, D. So by the tan chord theorem, A must be this X plus Y. There's the angle between the tangent and the chord. X we know, Y we just figured out. X plus Y equals X plus Y, and there you go. So A must be X plus Y. Now over here, that's a cyclic quadrilateral. Um, C just must be 180 degrees minus this x plus y. And what's the reason? Opposite angles of a cyclic quad, they've got to add up to 180. Okay, let's try the next part. Now they want us to prove that BC is tangent to the circle that passes through B, A, and G. Well, that would work if BC was a tangent is if the angle x plus y here would equal the angle at the top here. Well, we know that a is x plus y. Why do we know b3 is x? Well, d1 equals b3. d1 equals b3 equals x. It's another case of the tan chord theorem. Now you can say that bc is tangent. Uh, this line is tangent to the circle that would pass through bag, these three points, because of the converse of the tan chord theorem, that means if you've got a um, if you've got a a chord and the angle at, at uh, between the tangent b between the tangent and the chord equals the angle in the al alternate segment, this one up here in the top, then there must be a circle that passes through it. There, it's a cyclic kind of triangle there. Okay, so you know that. Let's try the next question. How do you know this little blue part, A, G, um, E, F, is a cyclic quadrilateral? Well, there's three ways to do cyclic quadrilaterals. You could have angles in the same segment. You could have opposite angles. But one is the exterior angle. We know this is X plus Y. If we could prove that F2 is X plus Y, then uh, we'd have it because that would be the exterior angle. So, what? oh, you look at it and go, hey, look at this x plus y. Um, look at this x plus y down here. x plus y right here. This angle right here is corresponding to angle E2. So, E2, E2, FEB here is equal to um, angle EDC. Or B, uh, yeah, that's right, is equal to this angle down here. Now, I've named it a little bit funny here. I says FEB, it should be equal to e, uh, EDC. That's what this should be. So let's just change this for, just for a second here. This should be not that. Right in there should be FEB. Because you've got this FEB equals this X plus Y, and that's EDC. So let's just put in angle EDC. So that's a little correction there. And I'll correct it when I make the memo kind of thing up there. Or when you'll, I'll make these slides available. EDC. 
corresponding angles. Angle EDC is X plus Y. Okay, so there you go. Corresponding angles. And now, because that angle is the same as that angle up there, that's then AGEF is a cyclic quad because of those exterior angles being equal, the converse of the exterior angle of a cyclic quad. And there we go. We have it.